the, the fact that you know you left it kind of open ended, so I was just wondering whether there's going to be another day, another morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. There definitely is and was, but um, I think I just let that happen, <laughs> let that life happen uh, over there. Um, yeah, for me, that I mean, my, my journey with these characters has ended. They have moved on and they've changed. So the part of their lives which I was sort of allowed to look into or, or they spoke to me, that part is over. I, I am their, I've been their voice so far and now I'll just let them be, I think. And actually, I forgot to mention this. You know, this book has a beautiful um, piece of art on its cover uh, by an artist called Sophia Naz. And that's also a bit of a coincidence because for me that really, you know, there's this... Um, figure sort of looking in and there is this so that also came about I think as a happy coincidence so for me that time and space where I was looking into these lives and they trusted me with their version of the truth uh, there is no truth but their their tellings their narratives that period is ended um, uh, writing wise also I've moved on <laughs> um, I don't also have the patience to write so I, actually that's why this couldn't have been stretched into a, a, a novel uh, so not a person of I didn't have that kind of patience to so yeah so no not not another day or in these people's lives <laughs> for sure <laughs> And rather, so I read non-fiction usually, and I guess when a writer writes a non-fiction book, he pretty much has the table of contents mm -hmm. in a sequence before he starts writing. Yeah. But when you write fiction, do you like already know what's going to look like finally at the by the end of it, or is it something you paint it as it goes? Like, is the end product something that you know more or less beforehand? This is how it's going to turn out. Um, I think many fiction, even when you write fiction. Uh, you can write to a plan. I think you know, like you can plan, you can set out your plot, you can write, a, you can do the tree of, uh, you know, the family trees and the characters and the sequencing and all. I don't. Uh, I don't write much prose. If I write, I write short pieces, and and one short piece basically grew into this. I had stopped with a, a seven thousand, eight thousand word kind of uh, piece, let's say, a longish story. I don't know what it was, and then because of certain, um, you know people who read it and all, I felt that, yeah, this could actually develop. But so I don't, uh, I don't do all that. But in, in a way, um, the, the life arc was there in front of me. Uh, then it was more about, you know, kind of getting in there. It's like, you know, you stand at the top of a cliff and you see a valley and you know, you're going on that hike and you know, that point is there. So it was about the journey. So for me, writing is always like that. And, and that's why I, I think I'm a bit of a nightmare for editors and maybe even for publishing houses uh, because it's not easy to... Uh, and that's why I'm grateful that my editor kind of let me be in that way and didn't try to... didn't tell me to sequence it out or, you know, kind of um, smoothen it out a bit. It has rough edges, uh, at least in my mind. But basically for me, no. I, I knew the, the arc and I knew uh, that there was a lot going on. Then it was more about parting the curtains, going in, figuring out how much um, should be told, how much should not be. Because ultimately, I don't want to sort of, uh, but the, the story is about what is not told and what is not known. So how much of it should be told? So that, that, that balance and that kind of harmony, that justice I wanted to bring about. But I, I don't really um, plan at all. Sometimes, the story, the narrator surprises me, as in the characters surprise me by what they come up with. Like what I thought I would write yesterday may not be what ultimately oh. I go and write the next day. So I have these uh, processes which I can't really explain. Uh, hi, Anuradha. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, I'm actually quite fascinated by, uh, you know, hearing you, the, like, you know, I, I've, I've written a book too. I wrote a, the history of Indian IT. I actually had real you know, real characters that I, I based it on. But yet I chose a very dispassionate view. I mean, they were like, actually now, you know, you could, they could have been non-living characters too. It was a very, very distant way I looked at their, their lives and so on. But to hear you speak about, uh, you know, these are imaginary characters, I, I suppose. They're not. Huh? <laughs> They're not. They're not. not. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying it seems like they are very real to you. So it's, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm really absolutely fascinated by what I hear. So here's a question for you. 
you, you've written other poems and you know I, 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 I'm a novel. So do the, any of these characters come back? I mean, do you do you have like conversations or anything? I mean, do they come back in, in your life? Uh, not in my life. My fa my family would have a tough time if that happened. But uh, but that said, there is a dialogue for sure, and they do um, they do cohabit with you, right? I mean, they're there in the room that you're writing. Like I said, for me, they are um, all around. They're speaking. Uh, I, I I mean, I usually write late into the night and all. So that's my time. It's like sitting in a room and you know um, listening to these voices and then picking and choosing and sometimes i think characters trick you by and that's that's where you know the, the thing changes like they, they take you in a direction and then you have to come back so because they they are so full of their stories and then you have to be the moderator sometimes because to me my story is important my narrative my truth is important so this is the way i write yes they they do uh, intrude into your mind space quite a bit um, I, I I let it, I try and keep them there. <laughs> but ultimately, I guess every artist is slightly, right? I mean, I don't want to use those words because those that would be attributing as kind of negative. But ultimately, the, the, the brain, the mind is creating an alternate reality, which is very real. And what is alternate is a question of physics because, you know, I, I you could be seeing me here and I could be a hallucination of some mental process right so what is really reality is a question but ultimately there is an alternate reality uh, that coexists with you uh, but uh, i ultimately walk away when when, when it is done and uh, during the process of proofreading and all that then it's more dispassionate uh, i have to be because if you're too close to it you don't want to um, actually give it away or even uh, kind of uh, you know condense it between the cover pages and also you have to be a little um, detached at that. It's like letting a child grow up and you know let them lead their own lives, yeah. Hey Anuradha. So uh, you spoke about writing like you were a spectator and then you narrated their life. So before it went into editing, did it ever happen that you are towards the end, but then you think, towards the beginning, I should have also mentioned this background and you went back and yeah. uh, changed some stuff. Yeah, yeah, a lot. So I, I write also back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I don't write linearly. I write, uh, what? A, <laughs> it's a bit like the, the episode of the day sort of a thing. Like what, what, who, which of them decides to mm -hmm. appear to you that day? And, and speak to you and then tell you something. That's why, you know, she was talking about the flash, you know, flashing back or flashing forward. But it's really not that. It's really about what decides to come out of the well that day, which character comes out and then speaks to you. Um, so I have gone a lot to the beginning sometimes and fleshed out, changed little things. Sometimes it's just uh, the, the sensual sides of, you know, some, some descriptions, maybe a, a sense of some smell or little... I get obsessed by certain paragraphs and want to change and change and change and change and change and realize that I've not really progressed at all, a lot. So that happens a lot. Definitely no no linearity in my writing. Uh, I sometimes go right to the beginning again to get into that continuity and then go to the point where I want to just add a little bit. So yeah, it's, it's quite uh, chaotic. Uh, I mean, if, if I... Now when I'm describing it, it sounds chaotic, not when I'm actually doing it, but uh, I do a lot of it. So how do you balance it? Because so when you're writing, uh, your writing is in a certain sequence, you may be flashing back in time, but then, or you decide to actually put the sequence of the writing itself to the you know earlier part. So how do you decide whether it's just a flashback to the sequence yeah. continues as your thought has continued or go back and change the uh, foundation? It's like when you are um, describing something that happened to you, to somebody you trust, right? And then you suddenly remember, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, this also happened, you know? So that's the process, basically. So in the book, in the book you should read it. Yeah. Yeah. Then in the book, she's saying <laughs> that, yeah, by the way, I forgot this. So it's yeah. like, you know, the, the way she remembers it, yeah, I forgot to tell you this also. When the narrator is telling you, yeah, by the way, I forgot this, this also happened, so, yeah. right? And I think memories, uh, memory is a fascinating process. Memories are created, 
artificial uh, also in the sense that you know uh, your brain ascribes adds takes away and all that right so when you uh, have you think you've described something fully uh, three days later you tell the same story you will not tell it the same way so that's the kind of sometimes when I go back and read what I've written I just want to I want to change it or that character is saying no no you know like you have to sort of now tell it a little differently or this little detail needs to be added because it's important to to her and because it's important to her it's important to me so I I, I just was transmitting this but yeah it's it sounds <laughs> It doesn't sound like something that any other publisher would ever want to pick up <laughs> if this hadn't got published. But that that's that for me that feels uh, more um, satisfying and more authentic, and it gives you a sort of high. You know, it is really my high is writing, uh, among other things. So it's it gives you it puts you into a certain state where in uh, in in forms like Kathakali and many theatre forms, especially there is a stage where the it's, uh, you know, one of the terms, uh, Malayalis will uh, understand this word, it's Pagarnat. You know, basically you are that person. Uh, and then the the script doesn't matter. The, the music doesn't matter. You know, the, the character will just sort of break through. I'm not saying you know, that kind of, but that is uh, a state which is, um, it's very satisfying to even moderately go there. So sometimes in my writing, I go there and if I'm being honest, I actually write in order to experience that. If somebody has read it and uh, also likes it, that's a bonus. <laughs> it's a congratulations, my brother. I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, reading the book. And Sam did a great job on getting that appetite to read the book. Um, I was curious about how you picked the narrator, because there are four characters clearly from what I just picked up. And you picked one of them to be the narrator. And how and why? Um, the main voice, uh, I mean, I won't say main, like the, the main sort of, uh, one of the main voices picked me, I think, and started this off. Um, and then basically it just evolved, like, you know, like I was saying earlier, there had to be a, it, I didn't want that voice to be alone. So there had to be a sort of, uh, you know, head behind the head kind of a thing like a, a twin that you carry um, I, I don't know I forget what it's biologically called but there are these uh, people who carry uh, a twin within them you know like in, in the womb sometimes the, the there is a twin egg and, the, and that egg actually leads a sort of aborted life inside the body so essentially you know biologically medically that's a fascinating idea so for me characters always appear in, in twins with a sort of symmetry, but as well as an asymmetry, and together uh, the, the whole. That's very important, I think, in, innately for me. So there have to be a, uh, and also the, the, the comfort and the solace, because to me, the, the intensity of what's happening to, these, uh, to that person would have been unbearable, perhaps, if it had to be born alone. So there had to be a, a, a uh, someone now the uh, the so there are four characters but they all don't necessarily talk in this uh, they they appear uh, here and there but it's a kind of a closed community in a way you know like if, if one if a person is alone you're alone if there is one other uh, person who is like right now there is that companionship and there is a sort of you know togetherness here that's enough so that was that made that makes sometimes i think life a little more bearable but also there is a little bit of solace a little bit of um, community there even if it's so so pairs of um, characters for me is, really feels uh, important and then the, the mirroring of lives that's also there here like you know how um, lives may seem different but in many ways um, a lot of lives are very similar in their longer term kind of longer arc so yeah, I mean, they, they, it just came about like that. I don't have a better explanation. But it felt like to tell this story, it had to have um, these people bringing, coming up with their parts of the story to be told in this particular way. And they themselves are sort of, they're not just telling the story, they are also the story. You know, they are part of it, but they're also in that journey. 
of it. And they had to be observers. They had to be people to whom things are happening. And an observation is a two-way thing. I mean, I, I observe you, you observe me. So there is that sort of mirroring of the, those actions also. But honestly, when I was writing, I didn't think all this out so much. It's only now. Uh, that's the way uh, these came about. But they were there right from the beginning. Uh, these sets of sisters, perhaps, were always there from the beginning. 